Aloha, I'm Hokulani Holt and I am uh, from this place. Our ohana has lived here for more than six generations within sight of this heiau. And because of that, um, you know, we have a, a, a lot of personal as well as I think perhaps historical information because of this place. And I'd really like to start with the personal part. Uh, like I said earlier, our ohana has lived within sight of this heiau for more than six generations from my great-grandfather all the way to my granddaughter. Uh, my my great-grandfather um, had places down here in Paukukalo and in the area known as Nehe. Nehe is straight below here at the mouth of the Wailuku River, primarily on the, if you're looking down Makai on the left side, if you see the tall groups of trees, that's where um, our ohana uh, also continues to live. I was um, raised on this side of the Kaehu Bay and the bay here in front of us is called Kaehu Bay and where the bunch of coconut trees are over at the mouth near the mouth of the Waiehu River is where I was raised. My grandmother Ida Pakulani Kaihue Kaianui was born back here what is now known as um, I think it was the Wailuku Community Center. It's now the Velma McWayne Center. But that area is, was known as Lamali'i. And Lamali'i, uh, as the story goes in our ohana, Lamali'i means little light. And it gets its name because of the torch lights that used to come up here on this particular heiau that they could see from down there. So Lamali'i, was the name of that place near the community center where my grandmother was born. Um, I currently live and my mother and her siblings lived right below the heiau, what is now known as Pokukalo Hawaiian Homes. Uh, the old name for that place is Kawahea. My, my mother and her siblings and my grandparents lived right at the bottom of the hill. If you come up the road, the, the house on the left-hand side, that was the area that they lived in. My tutu man, my grandfather, was the um, prison warden, and the prison was here at Kawahea. The reason I talk about these places is to give context to why this place is important. We know, and if you read in place, places like place names of Maui, um, at Kawahea is where it said Kahikili would train his warriors to go to war, because the heiau is right here. So all of this surrounding area would have belonged to the highest ranking ali'i because this heiau is intended for those kinds of uh, worship services for the highest ranking ali'i. We know that uh, Kahikili was the last one to, to restore the, the heiau to its glory and to use it. He had three main, main heiau. The one that is here, this is Halekii and, and Pihana is further back on the ridge. Uh, he also had the one that was under or in the area of Kaahumanu Church and one straight up Mauka here where the place known as Pu'u Ohala is right now was his third heiau and most of his worship services happened within those three areas. We also know that Kahikili's um, compound was there near where Kaahumanu Church is now and where he, he lived and his family lived. So the, the proximity of the heiau for his worship was, was very good. When we look at this particular place, we see 
that it is built very similarly to places that have Luakini or, or war hail. They build them so that they can see all around them and more specifically where they think their enemy will come from. So the different heiau have different um, ways that they face as they, as they feel that their enemy may come from this area, this particular area, so they set it up so that their worship services for war can be directed to the places that they feel uh, it would be needed. And, you know, for this particular place, it is absolutely perfect that it was facing this way because this is the direction that Kamehameha came when he came to do battle here on Maui. So the surrounding area uh, here tells us and how it is set up on this hillside, on this promontory. If you have an opportunity to see all the way around, not only can the worship service see all the way around, but the people all the way around can see the services and the hail happening here, which means they are confident that their ali'i is accessing their akua for their benefit, that their ali'i are doing the religious services needed to bring um, health and well-being to the aina and the people. So not only is it high to be close to Akua perhaps, but also so they can see all of the people and the needs of the people and the people can see the heiau and what needs to happen at the heiau. Another really interesting thing about many heiau um, especially is that it's near water. Yeah, many heiau are important heiau are built near water, whether it's a spring, whether it's a pond, whether it's a river, whether it's the ocean, it is built near water. And nothing is done by our people is done without a lot of consideration for many levels. The levels of, of practical physicality, but also religious, cultural, and personal need for those that access the hail. So an interesting thing to, to notice often is important hail are built within reach of water. The one that we sit on at this moment, uh, that I sit on at this moment, is called Haleki'i, the, the dwelling, the, the hale for the images. Um, and it, when it was begun to be excavated, they did find um, uh, post holes, post holes along the wall and inside the wall where the, the ki'i or the images would have been posted or would have been set up. And the ki'i then therefore would look out upon the community that these heiau are to take care of. Um, Haleki'i was uh, a preparation heiau where the, where the kahuna were, where the ali'i would come to prepare, where the kahuna would prepare, where the particular ceremonies would be done to particular images. And then Pihana, the one further back on the ridge, uh, was the one in which the actual war ceremonies were performed on. This heiau has, has never been fully excavated. We can guess where the other two corners or three corners are because we only see the fourth corner here. But, um, you know, we know that prior to the river being put into flood zone, that the river would move as, as the, the flow of water would have needed. And so being this high up, uh, the, where the walls were, were to address that, you know, the river will move and the river should move because that's what it is intended to do. 
Um, so this, it's not, it's not um, a surprise that this hail is here. It's not a surprise that this hail is here because all around here were where people lived. It was full of lo'ikalo. It was full of community. It was full of people that were creating, <coughs> raising the foods to support the community. Before these houses were built here, you could come up here and still see the terraces. You could still see the terraces as they came down. And if you look at how the houses are built here, they're built like this on, on little rise because that's where the Lo'i terraces were. And before these homes and build businesses were built, when you came up here, you could see. You could see where the terraces were here. So it's not unusual that a hail such as this is here. People lived here. The, um, many people lived here because if you look out at the ocean, you see where all the white water is. That's where the reef is. The reef is close. The reef is close for us that live on this side of the island. So with the reef close and the lo'i grazing taro close, food and production and all the things that make good living were right here. Yeah, they didn't have to go far to get reef fishes. The deep ocean was not far. They just go beyond the reef and the deep ocean is there for the deep ocean fishes. So this place raised many, 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 many uh, acres of, of lo'i and many, many people lived here. So it's not unusual that a heiau to benefit the welfare of the community is here and to benefit the welfare of the ali'i is here.